Un fuerte abrazo a Antonio. Hugs to everybody from Antonio Mendez in Tijuana. Amazing, amazing surgeon from there. And a lot of people getting in already. We are 15 minutes away. So let's, let's talk a little bit of what's happening, what's coming on Saturday. I think we're going to have oh, a big party. Venezuela, Iraq. Oh, Rizgar, again from Iraq. Nice to, nice to see you. 2.15 a.m. and with us. Oh, man, you like ophthalmology. That's, That's prime time, man. 2.15 a.m. is prime time for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Goiana, Brazil. Mexico. Colombia. ¿Cómo van? Dominicana. Uh, Margarita Arbaje. ¿Cómo le va, Margarita? Una gran maestra. Argentina. Germany. We got, Japan, we got Japan in the house. Japan's here now. Look who showed up. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, Yamane, master of masters. How are you? <laughs> yeah, nice. So, so happy to have you here. So we are yes. we're chatting, we're chatting with all the people who is coming in. Okay, people from Albania, people from Germany, Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela, the US. Bolivia, Peru. Okay, so yeah, no, Peru, Dr. Carlos Wong, como le va? Oh, from Hudson Nakamura. Asking yes, my man, Hudson Nakamura. From I think we have retina. We have Yamane. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have retina. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show the slides, but I'm going to lose the chat. Okay, so I'm going to show a little bit about what's happening. You can still you can still open your chat though, Evo, if you if you yeah, want. You can still you do know it. What I, I can see my my cursor, how you call it. The oh you know why are you are you using Keynote? Yes. You have to go to Keynote, go to preferences. Uh-huh. And then uh, let me show you right now. You go to you go to preferences. Yes. Uh, and then you have to go to uh, slideshow. Okay. Yes. And then the here. second row it says interacting. Yes. Click on show pointer when using the mouse or trackpad. Permitir. Uh, you 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 are the man. I think I did it. That's mastery it? mastery of keynote. <laughs> You're a master in everything, man. Come on. Oh, That's now awesome. it can work. Okay, so Ike is talking about mastery, but in in everything. Um. Okay, so. First of all, we are more than 150 people. Hi to everybody. We, we really want to know where you guys are from. Look at the panel. I don't have to introduce them. I'm pretty sure you know who they are. And we ask everybody, you know, to, to go to social media, go to Ophthalmo University, take a picture, hashtag in house with OU in Casa con Ophthalmo University, and tell us where you're from so we can, you know, grow the community and be every day bigger. Uh, the ones who are gonna be in YouTube, because probably there's not gonna be enough space to subscribe to the channel. That's very good for us too. And even for, for, for the speakers, uh, it's important to understand that we are an ecosystem, right? Here is a, an open space for everybody, everybody in the world, in Latin America, that has something to share, something to talk about, uh, we always love to share, mm -hmm. to make new friends. Uh, for example, right now we have people from Brazil, Japan, Singapore, Canada. We are in Mexico, but we are actually from Uruguay. We have people from Argentina in the, in the team. So if you really think about it, uh, this, is, this is thanks to technology that we're all together. Um, well, uh, again, these are the speakers. You know, I'm pretty sure you saw this image around for the last couple of days. I think we are going to have an amazing, um, an amazing time with us. And Ike, uh, I would love you to introduce what's going to happen on Saturday because if this is in 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 planet Earth, what's happening on Saturday? I think it's in another galaxy. <laughs> well, this is uh, this has been a, a great. Um result of being working together is collaborating and collaborating with the Thalmo University uh, in all these events has been fantastic. So this is an event that is coming up uh, with FECO Extrema, with Thalmo University, FECO Caribe. Uh, and basically, uh, it's, a, it's the latest in the Marvel 
a uh, series of uh, movies. You've heard of Gar Guardians of the Galaxy. What's this Guardians of the Lens? And uh, we have an international cast of presenters who are going to speak on individual cases. And I think it'll be a fun, interactive time. So I hope to see some of you there. No, oh, everybody there, right? We need everybody there. I think we need to... Yes, there's no excuse. We need to show the world that we're united and look at the countries. There's going to be people from everywhere, and mostly to, to teach, to share knowledge, to share skills. I think this is going to be epic, right? Be epic, epic, absolutely. Okay, so everybody who, who is signing in, more than 200 people, and we are still 10 minutes to go, so that's good. Like... Talk so to I, I, got, I, got a I got a question. I want to. I want to know where Takashi is. Where Where is he? Looks like he's in a garage or something. Or like, <laughs> like I can't tell. I can't tell the picture. What's up? No, I am in my barbecue place. Oh, your kitchen. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a kind of a barbecue. Very cool. The audio. The audio has a kind of echo. Oh, uh, okay. Better. Better. Yeah, great, man. Yeah, that, that's better. Hola a todos los 200. Hello to everybody, the wow. 200. Tell, tell your friends that, you know, it, it's going fast. Probably not enough space for everybody. So ask everybody to sign that. I think it's going to be a great day today. And we, the ones who are signing in, we, we, we want everybody on Saturday, Guardians of the Galaxy, of the Lens, actually, in this, in, no? I, I'm keeping saying in the galaxy. It's going to be in another galaxy. This well, you know, cool. Evo, have you seen, I don't know if you've seen the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, but you do kind of look like Chris Pratt a little bit. Oh, yeah, I do. I, I need to do the, the, I'm going to do the 10 second video for you. Right? Yeah, we need, we need you to do that. We need you to be Chris <laughs> Pratt for that. I mean, uh, yeah. um, I think you can, probably, you can probably lift as much weight as he could back then too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can't, can't, can't with it. Uh, so we ask, everybody to sign in and pick your place soon because this is going to be a, an event for like a very very big event um we so we are we are nine minutes so we're going to take time to ask people where they're from okay so um lisandro please we're going to ask the audience where they're from we we really want to know where you're from also use the chat please Okay, first, first oh. vote, then we can use the chat because we really want to know where you guys are from. And we're so happy that technology is uniting us, people from everywhere, every continent. I think today is going to be hard for Europe, but we already have people from Germany saying hi. So we know it's late. And our friends from Iraq, he said 2 a.m., right? He's 2 a.m. and watching us. So we're so grateful for for you giving us the time. People are still, you know, the, the number is growing, so let, let keep people both Most where you guys are from. Oh, Curitiba. Oh, oh please, uh, no, now I can see the chat. Well, so Brazil, it's, it's winning, Takashi, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see some uh, Daniel also, from Curitiba. Danilo, Uganda, Danilo. Uganda. Oh, Ahmed Yusuf, how are you? We saw you the other day. You are the first one from, from Africa. So happy to have you here. Uh, Peru, Curitiba. Love Rio de Janeiro. Palm Springs. Ah, Honduras. Ah. Curitiba too. Panama City. Hi, everybody. Madrid. Oh, Madrid. Spain, Spain, it's late, right? It's it's like, I don't know what time is in Madrid, but I think it's like one or two midnight. in the morning. Like about midnight, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Tripoli, hours. Libya, Tripoli, Libya, the one, the fir first, Libya. Wow. first people from Libya. Great to have you here. Dominican Republic, Saudi Arabia, Italy. Nice. Arabia. Brazil, Colombia. Hi everybody! So happy to have you here. So we are, we're seven minutes away. Let's let's see, Lisandro, what people are saying. Whether and let's do. A, a, I want to do a quick intro. Oh, but let's look at Latin America there. 
can we do the vote again, Lisandro? Maybe in five minutes or not? No? I don't think so. Okay. Let's wow. try. Let's try. Okay. Okay. Wow. Latin America, Europe, Africa, or US. Very interesting. Morocco, Venezuela, Mexico. Hi, everybody. So, uh, yes, Olga. yes, we, we can do the, the voting again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let, let's, let's try to do it maybe a couple of minutes. Okay. I'm going to. Let's see if I can go back. So I'm I'm just I'm just curious, you guys. I mean, how many how many webinars are you guys uh, like attending uh, on an av on an average day? What's what's your day like? Oh yeah, it's it's very interesting. Yeah. Like last Friday, we saw eighteen webinars only in Latin America. So I just can't imagine, you know, in the rest of the world, so many. We're doing two a day. <laughs> yeah, but no, those are ones that you're hosting. But then, of course. There's a there lot more people who are watching, right? You know, I mean, you could go all day. Shin, yeah. how is it going in Japan? Um, so now the number of the infection is increased. So most most of people are staying home, but, but um, hospital is do normal normally. Are you still operating normally then? Now I, I'm um, developing my own clinic. My clinic will open next week, so oh, now wow, I'm okay. preparing. <laughs> this is my <laughs> new new clinic. <laughs> wow! Congratulations! So this is the first webinar in your new clinic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is pretty cool. You Very guys, do you think after after this uh, COVID thing that you know teleconferencing webinars is going to kind of replace some of the physical conferences that we all spend so much time at? It's a good question. I mean, I think I think it'll definitely change things. Uh, I mean, we had webinars before, but they weren't yeah. so attended, right? So yeah, but exactly. now people see the value, and I think there's going to be a while before people are comfortable traveling as much. So I think I think I think it's going to be changing, but I still think that people love the physical networking yeah. still i think i think what about what about my idea of of doing something from you know on zoom or or just in distance and then when you go to a meeting you do you you go to do more hands-on activities right that could be very interesting too to prepare people like with talks and with knowledge and then to to have more interactive uh, and active meetings I mean, I think it will evolve, Evo. I mean, you know, when you're in the business of running conferences, I, I think we have to change with the times. And I think this thing is going to change the way we, we run meetings. Look at this. Uh, Sandika, it's saying that he only attends, uh, he only attends to, to Ike's webinars. Uh, no <laughs> webinars except for Mike. That's a good one. Carlos Gomez, gran amigo. Hi to everybody. Then also people from Barranquilla, Colombia. Venezuela, Ecuador, uh, a lot of people. So I'm going to start with a, with a very quick intro so we can start at English time. We have three, three minutes, OK? Um, we ask everybody who is there here, like uh, already signed, uh, to please uh, you know, follow us in social media, take the picture with in Casa Con O or in-house with Optalmo University, we'll be happy to, to grow our family. The ones who are on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. We tell everybody that this is an ecosystem, you know, to learn from each other. Right now, what, what we really want, we were talking with Dr. Yeo about uh, skill transfer, and that's what we want today, okay? We, we want uh, to share knowledge, to share skills, and I think this is going to be a very interesting day with a lot of uh, of new um, skills that you can learn. We have in Optoma University, we have some in Spanish, some in English. We have workshops in the morning, virtual classes in the afternoon. You're happy to come. We will tell you in which language we have it. Uh, we have an amazing panel here. You know, I'm the one hosting, but you know, the masters are here. You, you can see them, you know, Dr. Shin Yamane from Japan. Amazing to have you here. Ike Ahmed from Canada, no introduction, Ron Yale, you no know, actual president of Apacars, and we had an amazing discussion about education and what they're doing there. Takashi Ida from Brazil, a great friend. And it's so, so nice to have him here. And 
again, Ike, because now we are a lot more, I, I want you to have in two minutes, you know, to, to tell everybody what's happening on, on Saturday. Well, I was just going to make you go back to the last picture because I think uh, I think if you look at everyone's haircut now, you can see that that was pre-COVID, and you know, <laughs> my, my hair my hair has grown about four inches in the last couple of months. Takashi Takashi's got some long hair going on. That's pretty long for you. <laughs> and Shin Shin's looking very sharp. <laughs> so yeah, you know, listen, we're we're so excited with that for next Saturday, um, where we have a great international cast of surgeons protecting the universe. Uh, the so-called Guardians of the Lens. Um, and this is going to be a fantastic collaboration with uh, with our group in Canada, PRISM and Ophthalmo University, FECO Extrema and FECO Caribe. So I hope to see everybody there as well. I, I can uh, tell you it's going to be entertaining. We have a lot of great uh, presenters. And watch for the upcoming few days. You'll be seeing some interesting trailers to hype it up a bit more. Um, and so we have our very own Chris Pratt, Evo Ferreira, the Latin version of Chris Pratt, a uh, very good-looking guy. Uh, and uh, you'll probably guess who the other characters are in the movie. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we're going to ask again real quick where you guys are from. Let's see if that chart changes. it. We, we had a lot of people from Latin America, but we're expecting, we already know that we have people from Africa, Oceania, Europe, you know, US. So we're going to give you 10 seconds, 15 seconds to tell us where you are. You can also use the chat. I mean, we're gonna try to go fast. We're gonna try to transfer so many skills, but please feel free to, to use the chat. We're gonna try to answer everything we can, you know, during the during the virtual class. So let's see that number again, Lisandro, if you change it. Latin America is still up, but very, wow. very high US and Canada. Huh? We have people from Europe, Asia, still only one person from Oceania. So I will, we will love to hear where, where, where is it from? In the chat, you can tell us where you're from. Okay, so moving forward. So we start right on time. Wow. It's right on time. I will start very fast with the question. We, the, the title is Mastery in Cataract Surgery. So, but what is Mastery in Cataract Surgery? And there is going to be a second question for you. And I put one of the, you know, the master of master, the master Yoda. And we will, we will love you to, to hear from you if you think you can be a master in cataract surgery. Yes or no, right? What does it take to be a master in cataract surgery? I think that's very interesting. And we're going to talk about that during the entire uh, class and, and just to, to, to learn not only surgical skills from these guys, but also what what it took to be to you know to become a master so please Lisandro, tell me the what what the audience thinks wow nice very nice right so almost 90% 9 out of 10 we think we can be a master so then we we need to ask the the right question right um what is mastery and we all tend to think that mastery is something like genetic or we were born, you know, touched by a semi-god or something. But I love this quote about one of my favorite writers, that mastery is not a function of, of genius or talent. Rather, that is a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge. This is Robert Greene in his amazing um, book called Mastery. And let's see if, you know, they agree with me with this. What do you think? Do you think um, there is something true about this quote? Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. I don't, think, I don't think to be a master necessarily means that you are very talented or even a genius. And I think that you're, that you're absolutely right. Mastery is an ability to uh, focus your energy and your thought toward one sole purpose and to do it as efficiently as you can uh, and without uh, mistake and, and with minimal effort required to achieve uh, the task. And I think that's a great way that, uh, that you've quoted here. Uh, but I think it probably means something different to each of us and, and how we measure it. But I, I agree. I think that it really is a, it really is a function of how you, uh, you can you know, refine your art into something that is so reproducible and so predictable that you hardly have to think about it anymore. Great. D Dr. Yamane, what, what do you think 
uh, about this uh, of dedicating intense focus, for example, with your new technique. Do you think, do you agree with this quote? All right. If you agree with this quote, quote about, you know, intense, intense focus on something to become a master. Mm. And I, I don't know how, how to be a master, but uh, I think the knowledge is a most important factor to be a master and not, not um, skilled or good hands, but, but uh, knowledge is very important to be a master, I think. Great. So let, let's save the, the, the questions for the other, um, the other panelists. Um, so we, we're talking about what mastery is. Then the next question is how we can achieve this mastery. And as we can see here, even Master Joda was young, right? So he had to acquire that mastery. So when we talk about um, us as surgeons, I think it's very important to understand what it's a competent surgeon. That is somebody who knows what to do in surgery, then we have a good surgeon, something that has acceptable outcomes. Then they come the great surgeons. We were with Ike one week ago talking about from good to great, many interesting um, secrets to, to, to be great. And be great, uh, in my humble opinion, is to have repeatability of outcomes, to manage complications and complications. But then there is something extra that it's mastery is all those colleagues we see, they have creativity, they can be mentors, they invent new uh, instruments. So one, there's gonna be four tips to, to be a master. And the first one, everybody will tell you that is to have goals, but not any goal, to have a specific goal that you can measure, that you can reach, and, and, and you put a time in that goal, right? The second one, and this is because of I'm from Uruguay, you know, and sometimes it's easy for us in South America to attach emotion and meaning to what we do. Look at the panel. These guys love what they do. I can tell you, like, only foresee them that they love surgery and that they enjoy it so much. The third one, and one of the most important ones sometimes we miss a certain is to measure what we do, okay? You cannot improve what you don't measure. So you measure what you do with a, the correct feedback and then you can become, become a master. And the final one, and one of my favorite, it's about to practice, but not any practice. They say that only perfect practice makes perfect, right? And we call this deliberate practice. You can see uh, their Curry, you know, playing with two balls, playing basketball. He, he knows he will never have to, to be with two balls in a court, but that he knows that if he trains that way, he will be even better. The last one, and it's not only because they love to teach. I think masters teach because it makes them better. When you have to teach something, it's for sure that you need to be better. My, I'm going to finish this with, the, with a perfect example from Latin America. This is an honor for us. It's Dr. Luis Escaf that had the ability to be created. And he saw this, you know, this electric knife and he said, OK, I need to cut the lens. So what if? I, you know, I um, develop a machine that he called the SCAF Ultra Chop, so I can divide hard lenses uh, very easily. So he has many techniques to divide the lens. He's right now working in a machine that is going to be able to be independent, independent. Sorry, from uh, from the FACO machine. So you're going to have an Ultra Chop in every single OR if you want. So I think that's one of the most important examples of mastery. How we evaluate mastery? Well, we're gonna to try to evaluate these guys in the three pillars we love in Ophthalmo University. The mindset skills, how they reach into the perfect states, how they make decisions, and how they, you know, they do moral skills. So I'm gonna go right now to one of my great friends, Dr. Takashi Ida, who is he's gonna start talking about, uh, about a case and how he reached mastery with it. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a very big honor to be here. Um, oh, I would say that um, Ronald Yo, Ike, Yamane is my, I'm, is my master and Ivo as well as my cataract master. And I'll feel very comfortable to be here. Um, well, Good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm from I'm Takashi Hit from Brazil, and uh, I have no financial interest from the the company on the products that I'm presenting today. 
Um, I, I can't see the slides. Is there a first slide here? Is there the slides? Yes, yes. Yeah. The slide is present. Really? Oh my God. Uh, let me see you, here. Oh, okay, okay, I can see, okay. Um, okay, so, so I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, eight years old patient. Uh, he was very nervous and um, he turned, he, he, we, we did a very hard examination for this, this children. Uh, he had a trauma on the right eye, uh, a rock. He, he hit with a rock eight months ago. And he was with a blurred vision, no pain, redness. And he didn't do no surgeries and he had no infection uh, history. And uh, as you see on the, on the examination, you can see the cataract with an absor absorption of the uh, of condition of the crystalline. So you can see a fibrotic membrane and anterior and posterior capsular opacity. The IOP was 12, open angle, and uh, the vision was 2200. Okay, uh, next please. So here you can see the pentacon irregular with the irregular astigmatism and the OPD scan with the irregular astigmatism. So next. So here you can see the, the IO master didn't uh, calculate the right eye. So you, we had to do the, the OCU scan, the A scan. You see the endothelial, the, the endothelial count is uh, unremarkable. The fundus and the um, ultrasound was unremarkable. Next. So here you can see on the pentacum, uh, the Oculus pentacum, the shine flu crystalline, you can see the absorption, absorption condition and the fibrosis membrane. And you can see the image of the anterior and posterior capsular opacity. So, open for discussion. Um, Mr. Professor Master Ike Hamed, please, could you start? Well, I think there's a couple of questions here, of course. There's questions around prognosis and expectations and also with regards to the cornea, but I think the main factor we wanna do here is get his visual access clear. Um, and that means basically uh, addressing his fibrotic membrane. These resorb cataracts actually, in my experience, are not terribly challenging other than ensuring we get an opening in the capsule membrane. And that can often be done with a pair of micro forceps and scissors or with the vitrector. Um, and I think that the goal here basically is to try to do things uh, by minimizing manipulation of the vitreous and other things that could occur. And I'd have one more point about the, about the cornea. I'd want to evaluate more about why, what's going on with this cornea and whether there might be a benefit in some, some treatment there. Excellent, excellent. Dr. Shin Yamane? Yes. So is this an eight year old? So yes, yes. So no, no. We, we must open uh, both of the anterior and posterior capsule. So then we, we should do anterior vitrectomy. Then uh, maybe this is a normal actual language. So I will put the lens on, on the back. Sarcas fixation. Uh, excellent. You you would the Yamane, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe the Donuri is strong enough. <laughs> Everything's Yamani, come on. <laughs> Evo for discussion. No, I, I have I have an advantage. I live close to Toronto, so I that will go directly to Ike. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ron? Well, I think normally in a case like this with as much fibrosis as this, I know that it's nice to use the femtosecond laser to cut those uh, fibrotic bands. But I think with a pupil as small as this, uh, uh, then I don't think I would bother with that. I think, uh, as I mentioned, you can use the grasper forceps and really do a decent capsule 
uh, makes it just a careful fit good with the lens. In. Oh, excellent, excellent. So the 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 discussion goes with the the type of IOL, you know, uh, sclerofixation. I think uh, this kind of uh, tech, this kind of cases we we must pre be prepared for anything, right? CTR, CTR with fixation hooks or anchor or possibility of a vitrectomy. So everybody agree with that, okay? So like uh, Dr. Ram was talking in, in Jonathan Lake in, in 2016, ACRS he, from Brazil, he showed a, a, a technique called flare. Uh, he used spot separation, uh, high spot separation with a spot energy, high spot energy to, to do fragmentation pattern and to create uh, a six pi shaped wedges. Um, so, so he used this to, to cut IOLs with the Fento. So see, thinking the same technique, we, we did plan uh, a way to do a um, uh, capsulotomy and fixate a three piece IOL on, on, the, on, the capsule, on this capsule, okay? So since it's fibrotic, we don't have crystalline, only capsular bag. The next step would be to do the, the, the laser. So we, you, we have two platform of laser and we use the lens X. Next, please. So here you can see the parameters. We ex extended the capsulotomy all the way of the posterior capsule. And we use the frag pattern to treat the fibrotic membrane. So we could easily remove it afterwards. And basically you can treat full thickness of this fibrotic crystalline. So this would be difficult to, to do with the, the, the Fento. You have a, this, this, well, the main purpose is to capture the optic of the three piece IOL. Next, please. So you can see uh, as the Fento laser is applied, uh, I usually use the, the Azico slate and the lane fence second spatula. So in this case, um, the, the capsulotomy uh, um, was not free floating. It has a soft membrane and we had some tags. So we removed the capsulotomy gently with the Akahoshi capsular hex forceps. And then I performed a visco dissection, removing the posterior fibrotic capsule. And for my surprise, the posterior capsule was intact. Mm. So applying a soft maneuver to separate completely the fibrotic membrane from the posterior capsule. And you can see the, 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 the result, the final result with the single piece IOL in the bag. So I never could be better with the application of the Fento laser on this case. Did you use capsular hooks or a Malugin ring to deliver the laser? Uh, did you use the capsular hooks or Malugin ring to enlarge the pupil to do the Fento laser? No, no, no. I, I used the limit that I had. So you can see on the, the picture, this is a 45th day uh, post-op operative day, and you can see the pupils is enough to do the capsulotomy. And uh, the IO was centered. We had a PCO. It's a it's a it's a eight years old uh, children. So so we had a, a, a one plus rate of PCO. Okay. So well, like the lesson is always be prepared for complication. On this case. It was planned a three-piece IOL, and we, we did put a one-piece IOL. I think uh, new approaches are needed to Fento in complicated cases. And I think further studies should be evaluated for Fento parameters, because I used a, a parameter for cutting IOLs, right? Well, in this case, we increased spot energy and spot separation. And I think the, the result was 20 happy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akashi. Amazing. Just one quick question for you. We're talking about mastery. 
What do you think about um, using and adopting technology to be a master? Because somebody will say, you know, technology will not make, make me a master. I think you resolve this with technology and that can make you a master as well. What do you think? Yeah, you know, as I, I, I showed other techniques that people are uh, trying to use technology for other things, you know? So on this application, let's say that people usually do, wouldn't use uh, Fento, okay? But um, I was re really surprised with the result. I didn't expect it would be like this. And I think people have to have open mind, you know, to use new instruments, new technology for, you know, new cases, new situations. And I think all, all here masters of the masters knows, knows and do that every day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Takashi. Dr. Yamane, please. Yes. Now it's your turn. Thank you yes. for being here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. So my, I have two cases and um, it's a very special case, difficult conditions. Please go ahead. No financial interest. So I have two cases, traumatic posterior capsule rupture and I have uh, present, I will present a new technique. Next please. So the first case is 17 year old male and uh, he had an injury of the, with a badminton shuttle. Then uh, and his right eye developed a cataract with an posterior rupture. And uh, we, we can see it in this slide, but the uh, um, horizontal tear is on the posterior capsule. Next, please. Uh, so the cornea has astigmatism, but uh, no mali. Next, please. please. Okay. Then I started the surgery. I first do an LLI. I have no femtosecond laser. So, and I started to do an anterior caps CCC. And I put in the silicone. So, sorry to interrupt you. What is that device you're putting? And second, why why we are seeing green? So, and this is a mature cataract. So I stained the anterior capsule with ICG mm -hmm. in the green. And I put the silicone ring in the anterior chamber. This is a six millimeter diameter. So I can use this ring for guide. And the other question is, what do you use to film your, your, you know, your surgeries? Because it, the quality is extremely high. <laughs> Sorry? The, the, the quality of the, of the film, it's, it's, it's very good. Oh, thank you. I, I use an Zeiss microscope and Ikegami video system. And I try to aspirate the lens with 25 gauge bit director with an infusion with 20 millimeters mercury. But I, f I feel the infusion is too high. So I put off the infusion and just aspirate the lens with bit director because the poster capsule is ruptured. So the lens tend to go posterior also. I just aspirate and sometimes I feel the BSS, add BSS to maintain the IOP manually by manually. The lens is very soft because he is a bit young. And so I just aspirate with bit director. I didn't move move the bit director, just aspirate. Do you think it would have been more effective using a sort of IA tip from a FACO machine rather than the vitrectomy tip, Shin? Uh, 
so I, I don't want to move the, I don't want to change the IOP to avoid the, the uh, capsule will open. I, I want to maintain the IOP to avoid the tear will move to anterior. After aspiration of the lens materials and aspirate the cortex with vitrector, then put the one piece IOL in the back. The upper side and downside is uh, intact. So I, I could insert the IOL in the back. His, his parents uh, want to put the, put the lens, uh, multifocal multi lens in his eyes. So I, I didn't recommend that we discussed and uh, we decided to use a multifocal lens for him. After putting the lens, I asked the discourse and and trim, trim the posterior capsule. Then finish the surgery. Okay, next please. So two weeks after surgery, the vision is 1.5 and he was so happy. Thank you. So next, is a low link cat technique. This is not the cataract surgery, but uh, almost a bit of retinal surgery, but please go ahead. So for when I meet to the lens, crystalline lens dislocation, we have some choice. I don't want to do ICCE because the wound is too rash. And we sometimes use powerful carbon leakage to elevate the dropped lens. Then do fake emulsification. But the powerful carbon leakage come to the bubble, small bubbles, and sometimes difficult to remove everything. And we, we can use some folks or the director to hold the lens if, if we can complete the CCC. But in this case, the lens is completely dislocated. So we, I, I couldn't do CCC. So I decided to remove everything. I first bent the 27 gauge needle like a sword, Japanese sword. and penetrate the lens center with the needle. Then starting to remove the lens with an PA. Then the, the lens comes roaring and lowering. <laughs> so the tip is that we must penetrate the center of the lens to roll, rolling. So some mat fragments was dropped, so they moved with the director. Then I fixed the IOL with the French technique. I penetrate and insert the 30 gauge single needles with a needle stabilizer. Then insert the IOL.
then insert the trailing haptic into the second needle. After trim, cutting the haptics about two millimeters, then make flange with cautely. And I push the flange and fixed the flange into the square thumbnail. We, we must uh, fix the flange completely inside the square to avoid the movement after surgery. Okay. So I, I named the, this technique, the lowering cat, cataract, lowering cat technique. And this is my take home message. There are lows in difficult situations. Thank you for your attention. Amazing, amazing, Jane. Uh, I have a question from the first uh, surgery. Sometimes we get uh, to do talks about uh, premium IOLs, multifocal IOLs, and people are, are scared to put them. Let, let me get this straight. You put it, it was traumatic. You already knew that you have a, P, a posterior capsular break and you put a single piece in the bag and you, and the, the eye was perfect the next day and long term too. Yeah. Interesting. It's very interesting, you know, to, to, to see somebody do it like that, to, to not be afraid of those cases. Yes, but I prepared, of course, three piece IOL for on the back fixation. And I have uh, another choice of, um, um, of square fixation. So in, in that case, I fix a round piece multifocal lens in the back, but I prepared another choice. Perfect. Guys, another question. Uh, there is a person that asked, what was the marking device used for 30 gauge needle placement for Yamane Apex? So you mean a needle stabilizer? Yeah. He yeah, uh, asked for the stabilizer. You, uh, yeah, you can get it from Goider, German company. Yeah, yeah. But why, why did, why, why you recommend to use? He's asking why. Yes, um, the insertion angle of the needles is very important to avoid IO tilt after surgery. So it's not so easy to control the insertion angle. It it must be symmetrically. But uh, I, I can do without needle stabilizer, but for beginners, I highly recommend to use needle stabilizer to avoid IO tilt. Uh, no, perfect. Hudson Nakamura is asking if, it, if you were using 27 gauge. Yes, uh, I, I always use 30 gauge single needle, but you can use 27 gauge. Some some doctors, especially outside Japan, use twenty seven gauge needles. And so, if if you make the flange large enough, it it will work. Yeah, um, yeah. Lot, lots of people are asking, especially the Brazilians. Um, I would I would like to say that Yamane Yam, Yamane is like. Uh, a verb to us, right? Uh, he he changed the world uh, fixation techniques, right? And we we hear a lot that uh, Yamane in in Europe or United States or other countries, especially in Brazil, uh, he had he did a live surgery uh, scleral fixation in Brascars in Brasilia last year. It was really really fast, and I was really surprised when I asked you how many minutes you needed, and you said, ah, oh, 20 minutes. And I said, oh, two minutes, okay. Uh, he said, no, no, it's uh, 15 vitrectomy and five minutes to do the fixation. I was really <laughs> impressed, really impressed. And, and you did it live, sir. You did it, you, you showed this live. So it's very, really impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Okay, let's continue with Dr. Ron Yeo from Singapore. Thanks very much, uh, Evo. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. I have no financial uh, interest. I thought, you know, we've seen uh, a, a lot of very complex cases. And to me, I will add to what mastery is, Evo. And mastery to me is also not being ever surprised by anything that the eye presents you. Next slide, please. So I thought I would talk about these cataracts that are neither here nor there. Now, cataracts are, are, you know, the very dense ones, and we're going to hear a lot of talks about that. And, you know, if you rupture a capsule in a cataract, you blame the patient because you came so late. But if you rupture a capsule during a soft cataract, the cataract marsh, who are you going to blame? So I think it's a very important topic. Next, please. So, and, and you, next slide. And if you take this point that soft cataracts can be hard, you know that we are faced with all these variety of uh, cataract densities. Next, and how we classify them, LOX3, NS125, soft, hard, and I would like to introduce you the concept of neither here nor there, which means not so soft and not so hard. Now, the very soft nuclei are really very easy. As we saw, you can just aspirate those uh, cataracts which are under 30 years old. For the very dense ones, you have all these really very, very complex uh, techniques. But for the neither here nor there cataract, you have these challenges of difficulty in rotating the nucleus, difficulty cracking, uh, occluding, gripping, and chopping is dangerous because your phacal tip can core through very, very rapidly. Next, next please. So let's just look at one of these difficulties. In this case, where a stop and chop is being attempted, you can see the surgeon's done the primary groove and is going to crack it into half now. And he puts the instruments into the groove and pushes. Just watch what happens to the chopper. It's gone right through the nucleus. You can see that there now. Now, how dangerous is that? Your chopper will go right through and hit the capsule. So why is managing these nuclei important? Well, because we're doing more and more refractive lens extractions. Many are young and steroid-induced PSCs. Next. So this is where you want to prevent the surprise. Devise a strategy so that you can be prepared for every eventuality. Now, hydrodissection alone in these eyes gives you a big, messy lump. But if you do hydrodelineation, that will make your surgery much easier. Next, let's have a look at this. Now, hydrodelineation, creating that golden ring, isolates and frees the nucleus so you can take it out in one piece, on block. Next, please. Let's have a look at the next video. So in this case, we're going to do hydrodissection first. And we saw that wave. And then we're going to do the hydro delamination, which is just perinuclear hydro delamination. And you can see that golden ring appear. Once that golden ring appears, you kind of know it's free. Clear away the cortex and then go to memory two and you can actually impale the nucleus, pull it out, lollipop it out. And your operation is basically over when, once you've done that without having to do a stop and chop, et cetera, et cetera. Next, please. Next slide. Now, what actually happens when you're hydro dissecting or hydro delaminating? So I'm gonna use this new technology of live OCT to show you what actually happens. We've done the hydro delamination here. You can see that the nucleus which is in gray on the right there. And you can see the fluid uh, level underneath that nucleus, which shows you that your nucleus has been freed by the hydro delamination, which allows you to do the on-block removal. And when you've removed the nucleus, you can see the empty space occupied by that nucleus. So I think this is such an important technique uh, to use. But sometimes we do stop and chop on a nucleus we think is hard enough and find that it's neither here nor there. So how do we modify our technique? Well, if your nucleus is on the soft side, do deep narrow grooves, be careful of impaling, but do a quick vertical chop almost before you apply any energy. Next, please. Because if you apply energy too soon, you will core through. So here, we're getting ready. And as soon as we start, we are gonna chop right away before impaling, before getting grip, because the nucleus is just too soft. And again, on the other side, position the instruments and do a quick vertical chop almost before you apply any uh, ultrasound energy and that way you will get away with these uh, stop and chops. What about flex? Is there any point using flex in the already soft nucleus? Well there is if you want a perfectly round CCC but you need to modify your technique. Next. So like, like Takashi I like to use uh, a, a grid pattern and here you can see a grid pattern but if you just go ahead and fake all this you're going to have a messy amateurish looking uh, surgery. 
So for these, I like to complete the nuclear separation by using this uh, pre-chopper, which I designed. And if you use the, this round pedal pre-chopper and go into the nucleus, you will find that you can separate that nucleus very nicely into half which already makes your surgery easier. And then by rotating it around, you can then complete the other quarters using this. Again, you can see it's like a ping pong bat. Uh, again, this was based on an Akahoshi design and that works uh, uh, very, very well. And then after that, you can uh, go, go ahead and FACO the uh, nucleus. And in this particular case coming up, next slide. Next slide, please, yeah. And in this particular, uh, Nucleus is already had a grid, it's already been quartered into four quarters. And you can see that using this is a knuckle tip that Dr. Atahoshi uh, designed some years ago now. And with this, we can actually aspirate the rest of the nucleus up using hardly uh, any ultrasound energy. So again, you can use facts in these neither here nor there cataracts. Next, please. Now, having revisited pre-chopping in conjunction with flax, I thought, well, why don't we just pre-chop these neither here or not there nuclei? Because I think that's a very nice technique. Next. Now, if you use the Akahoshi Karate pre-chopper, and you can use either a combo two or the new combo four, you can see in this neither here, one plus, one and a half plus nucleus, that you put the pre-chopper in, you crack it into two halves in a moment, and then rotating it around, you crack it into four, all without the expense of a femtosecond laser and the extra time that it takes. So the femtosecond, uh, the, the, the combo pre-chopper or the uh, combo two pre-chopper that Atahoshi introduced to us, I think is a wonderful tool for this. And basically once you quartered it, the operation's over. Next slide, please. So pre-chopping, neither here nor there nucleus, I think makes a lot of sense. Next. And so just to sum up, you know, first of all, recognize that the case that you're having may be neither here nor there. And I love the karate pre-chop technique for most of these. If they're a little bit softer, say in the 40 year old, I would hydro delaminate and lollipop it in the end block technique. And for the slightly denser ones, I would do the quick stop and chop. Next slide, please. So match the technique to the nuclear density and beware the neither here nor there cataract. Next. So our APA CRS was supposed to be in July 2020 in two months time, but we've now moved it to 2021 in July as well. Thank you very much for having me, Evo. Thank you. Amazing, Ron. We, we will all be there. Ike for sure is going to be there. But well, actually, well, he's I, our limb lecturer. I was supposed to be there and I was <laughs> to it, so I, I want to be there next year. No, we're this, looking forward to you, Ike. I, I seriously want to say that I love what you say about having a plan. You know, somebody has a plan and an algorithm for everything. It's prepared and, and it's a master. I, I agree 100%. I would like to know what Ike Ahmed thinks about you not know, here, not there, cataracts. You know, this guy, he has, he, he's in, into the extremes, hard cataracts, hard cases. What is your approach, Ike, to this kind of cataract? I think, Ron, I think you said it very well. I mean, we often don't talk about it, but the soft lens can give people a lot of problems. And it's not just like getting the surgery, but doing it skillfully and doing it in a slick manner. Like you said, we can get it done, but it looks very messy. And it's just unsatisfying, and it's probably not good for the eye either. So I think you're getting great pearls. I, The biggest thing for me that I found made the biggest difference for me was how to delineating and laminating the lens into multiple layers, at least two, because it allowed me to separate the endonucleus and remove it and then flip the epinucleus. And when I had that, the light bulb went off. And ever since then, the soft lens have become easier. So I think you've, you've highlighted great ways to approach it. I'm glad you covered it. And I think the technology, the Life OCT is such a useful tool to show people what they're actually achieving. Very cool, very cool. Any other comments from the panel or we go to Ike? We are amazing timing. Yeah, I would, I would just like to to tell that um, Ron Yaw is my film festival uh, tutor. He's <laughs> helping me with a with an, a serious IFAS uh, we we did in 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 Shigu, Shingu Indian tribes. Uh, I would like to thank you very much, Ron. You're very welcome, Takashi. <laughs> Let's go with Ike then. Takashi, are you editing that in your kitchen or what? I mean, uh, you got multiple purposes in there, it looks like. 
So Eva, I, I want to thank you for, uh, for inviting me to this panel. Uh, this is about mastery of cataract surgery. We've talked about good to great and to be, be a master. And I think technology has really helped us a lot. But I, I want to, and Evo, you asked me to talk about things that are more widely applicable. So I'm not going to show complicated cases, but I want to show cases that could be done in a more slick manner, in a more efficient manner, a very focused manner. And I'm going to talk about using our bare knuckles, okay? Bare knuckle. This is where real fighters play, right? We don't need to use gloves. We don't need to use a machine gun or a knife. We use our bare hands, right, with all due respect, okay? And we get in the ring and we fight. Whether you're a woman or a man, that's how you basically earn your right to be a master, in my opinion, with a little bit of ex ex extravagance. We have to know, however, the parameters are working. And obviously, we're phaco surgeons. I think that's a universal, you know, uh, applicability access. I want to differentiate between chopping and quadrant removal. Let's remember, in chopping techniques, you're trying to lollipop the lens. You're trying to enhance holdability. We want to occlude. We don't want to break occlude. We want to occlude to hold the lens, particularly during chopping. That's lollipopping. For those techniques, if you look at my settings, I don't use torsional. I use longitudinal fecal to drive the nucleus, drive the needle into the nucleus and hold it. I don't want to have a larger opening. And I have very high vacuum, 650 millimeters of, mer millimeters of mercury here in this case, at the beginning of position one, position three, sorry. And as I and I want to hold that lens when I'm not doing phaco at the highest amount of vacuum, and that's why it's at the at the end of position two, early part of position three. Quadrant move, on the other hand, I don't want occlusion. I want fallibility, and I want a carousel. Carouseling very much like uh, like Shin Yamani showed with his technique of carouseling around a 30 gauge needle. Although here we're carouseling on our tip, and for that torsional phaco is advantageous, and for that we want a higher flow rate. So let's play some video. And I'm going to basically just show again using uh, different take. Oh, one last thing is I'm a big fan of linear control of settings. I won't debate with my fellow colleagues. I mean, anything can work, but linear control gives us more control. To be a master, you have to, have to be in control. And controlling fluidics is critical to allow the machine to work with you and your foot. And this allows you to encounter all kinds of lenses. Let's, let's play the video there. And what you what you'll see is uh, back back one back one uh, back two two slides if you don't mind. Uh, I have two videos to share with you. Just the one before that. This for, before this one, it's a small pupil case. I get a lot of difficult small eyes with small pupils, and these patients often can't even be dilated for the risk of having an IOP spike. Lazander, if we can go back to uh, slide uh, five, uh, there you go. That's the one there. So you'll see I do this on a topical anesthesia. I dilate the patient on the table with a mixture of phenylephrine and lidocaine under topical anesthesia. I have control of the eye by doing it in this manner. I like clear coronal incisions. I think a nice, you know, 1.5, 1.75 millimeter length incision is good. And here I'm just making sure there's no poster sinecia. Now, what I want to show is this capsularis technique, which is very simple. We don't off, we don't need to use capsular retractors or pupillary rings. We can basically use an uncovered technique where essentially we're looking at the way the flap is tearing. We can use direct visualization using the Kuglin hook. But the idea here is to use your extra senses. I think to be a master, you have to have your spidey sense working. You have to be able to, we want to be able to sense things beyond the obvious. And here what I'm looking at is not the, where the tear is. I'm looking at where the tear is going. The difference. You know, in Canada, we love hockey, and they talk about Wayne Gretzky, one of the best hockey players in the world. He didn't go where the puck was. He went, he, went, he, he went where the puck is going, where the ball is going. And here we're looking and seeing where the flap is tearing by looking at the way the flap is tearing and making sure it's tearing in the right way. We can do this without visualizing where the actual tear is. The problem with small pupil phaco is not small pupil phaco. The problem is small rexus phaco. And so here... We essentially are making sure we have a good size rexus. Once I have a good size rexus, I feel I can manage this case. I'm going to show you what I call the hemi flip technique. It's basically using chopping here with a basically a hybrid horizontal motion chop. And this is important for softer lenses. And I flip the hemi nucleus on its side. Watch right now, you'll see it happens very quickly with a quick move of my chopper, and I bring it up. And for me, this is a very predictable technique. And I want to add another variable with mastery is predictability. I think a master knows exactly for every action that she or he is doing to expect that reaction. And by having that, you're already two steps ahead because you know what's going to happen next. And I think that's another attribute. Evo, we talk about 
teaching how to be a, how to try to be a master. And I'm not saying I'm a master, but I try to be able to do procedures like this, knowing what to expect. By the way, if you want, if anyone's watching my settings, I want you to see that I've gone from chop settings, longitudinal high vacuum to more torsional, higher flow rates, a little bit less vacuum. And this allows me to take advantage of between holdability versus followability, two different approaches for different parts of the procedure. And you can see here that we have more than enough size of the pupil to work here. Of course, if one is uncomfortable, we can use retractors in the sort. This technique of using cortical removal is using fluidics. There's very little stripping involved. We're using the fluidics to actually aspirate the material. It's subtle here, it's subtle. But rather than grabbing the lens material and bringing it to the center of the eye, we're using the fluidics of the machine to do the work for us. This avoids the need to continue to move the instrument back and forth because in, in cortical removal, capsules break when we grab capsule and move. If we can minimize the movement by simply using aspiration rather than stripping, right? It's, it's, more, it's, more, it's more parental friendly too, by the way, and it avoids the movement around. So I wanted to share that approach uh, with regards to small people fickle. Let's go to the next slide. Again, just to remind you again, the difference between our chop settings and our quad removal settings. This next video will highlight a dense cataract here. This is an aniridia patient. And often the corneas are not clear. Why, why is it a problem? Because with coaxial light, we get a lot of reflection back. We get this backscatter to, uh, to our eyes, making it difficult. Using a side illumination, as been described by many, is a, is a helpful way to visualize. A master has to visualize and has to imagine beyond the obvious again. And I think by having experience, by knowing the physics and expecting the way the capsule will tear in this case, with some help by side illumination, allows us to approach this case. And again, trying to master this approach. Uh, we do have a dense lens here. And in these cases, I've tried all kinds of approaches. And someone asked about staying in the capsule. And I'll talk about that in a second, maybe toward the end. I don't stain these capsules with Tripan Blue because these capsules become more fragile. And aniridia capsules are, are bad news. This is my technique for dense cataracts. We, I dig a deep trench to the center on the posterior pole of that lens. I'm not worried about making a long trench. I wanna make a deep, deep, deep hole in that lens nucleus because the challenge with dense lenses is that posterior leathery fiber that can develop that can make it difficult to crack the lens. So I call this a debulk technique. We're debulking the lens. And although we talk about chopping being very sexy and everything else, we need to be able to groove. We have to be able to use our settings to sculpt the lens properly. In this case, I've just gone to the center and just beyond the center, and I've created a wall, a nasal wall. But I've gone deep down just to the posterior pole because that's the thickest part of the lens. And Tripan Blue makes, by the way, the, the capsule fragile by its very nature. And there's been studies that show this, so we avoid doing it in these cases. Now you see I'm basically embedding the needle under high vacuum and chopping the lens. But we don't have to try to chop the lens in one sweep, in one split. Here we're going to crack partially, sequentially, and rotate. Lateral traction on the capsular bag exerts zonular stress and can leave a fragile lens potentially in a problem situation. Once we have it cracked now, the hemisections are important. And I think every master I think who does cataract surgery is always relieved to have the lens that's been cut in half. This takes away a lot of the, the concern we have. And I'm addressing this to all surgeons out there, beginners as well as experienced. We're gonna be careful and chop the lens into, into small fragments. Usually I chop at least you know uh, three, four times when we have a denser lens. And now I want you to watch for fallibility. Look at the minimal chatter. This is because we have the right combination of power delivery and fluidics. Evo, a master has to be knowledgeable. They have to know this machine inside out. And don't look at it as a handicap, look at it as an advantage. And that means programming this machine, you know, so well to your technique. It means going back in the lab and experimenting with different settings. It means, you know, understanding how machines work, how flow-based machines work how vacuum-based machines work and how power is delivered. I know it's not very sexy again, and I could show a very complicated case here, but I want to show a basic procedure here, which will lead on to dealing with difficult cases. Viscoelastic is very helpful to add during the surgery for dense cataracts to protect the cornea. Again, watch how we see how the piece is carousel. This is carouseling. Carouseling is a very effective means of minimizing chatter by using fluidics, power delivery, and a second instrument. 
Often at the end of the case like this, we have a challenge. We have the last piece here is dense cataract. We're worried about the posterior capsule. In these cases, it may be helpful to remove the second instrument from the eye to use a dispersive viscoelastic under the fragment. Just pause for a second, and then we can, we can continue along with the procedure again, taking advantage of a more blunt instrument. So, Evo, I wanted to share those pearls. We can go to the next slide. I wanted to share those pearls uh, with regards to handling small pupils, uh, doing uh, softer lenses with a high delineation, as Ron showed, and, and a hemi flip and then using dense cataract settings for denser cases, understanding how to master the machine. Don't let the machine master you. Don't rely on the, on the representatives to tell you how to, how to do your FACO based on settings. We need to master the machine ourselves, and that means we have to know the machine works and know how to use our bare hands, our bare hands to get the job done. So thank you, Evo. Oh, th thank you, IK. This is unbelievable. I think you gave more than 30 tips in 10 minutes. Uh, I, I really like the, the awareness, the anticipation, the thinking beyond the obvious. I think that's one of the real secrets of a master, right? Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to share here is, I mean, we want you to learn new techniques, yes, but it's not just learning new, new techniques, it's applying a, a different logic in your approach to becoming from competent to becoming super competent, which I guess is what mastery is about. So something from the panel? comment i would just add one thing uh evo with you you had a very nice question how many of your delegates can achieve mastery and it was about 90 percent thought they could and 10 percent couldn't my message would be that you know very few of us can be master surgeons like ike i mean we're not born with that talent but i think if you strive to be a master even those 10 percent will at least be the best that they can be and i think that's what it's about being the best you can be whether you become a master or not very, very good. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Ron. I think, and, and we can't stand still, right? I think everybody on this panel is always innovating and changing and evolving. And if you're, if you're status quo, you're falling behind. And I love the innovation that we've seen even today with all these cases. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. And we all learn something from each other. But I, when I watch, when I watch Yamani, when I watch Takashi, when I watch Ron, I'm not watching their hands. I'm thinking what is going on in their head? That's what I'm thinking. What's going? What are they thinking about right now? Why do they think that? Like many of you have been asking on your questions, and that's exactly the way to think. Is why did why did she or he think to do that? Very nice. Um, I since you were talking, uh, we we, we want to use this moment to invite everybody to Saturday real quick. Well, yeah, I mean it's incredible. You have you've had well over a thousand people here, and also on YouTube as well. I mean that's a testament to uh, to you, Evo, and your team. Uh, we're going to collaborate again on Saturday, man. It's going to be amazing. This is this is like going to be an epic webinar, and we invite all of you to keep that date in mind. Saturday at twelve Toronto time and your time anywhere in the world, it's our time, uh, and we invite you to to, uh, to be part of the guardians of the of the lens. Thank you, um, guys. Let's let's have a chat. So this is perfect timing. If you really think about it, you know, less than a one hour, we have four masters with that. We talk about mastery. We talk about what is to be a master and how we can become a master. So I would like with, in the order you guys presented, Takashi, Dr. Yamane, Dr. Yeo, and Dr. Ahmed to have a uh, final words for the audience, maybe answer some questions too. Takashi. Yeah, Ivo, it, it was magnificent. Uh, it was impressive with the the um, everybody's presentation. Um, Ike, um, I think uh, some some people asked what chopper you was you were using, and uh, when do you use uh, pupil uh, expansions expansion, and uh, uh, when do you stain the capsule? They are asking here in the in the yeah, a lot of discussion on it. I wrote a few comments. I mean, we stain the capsule all the time, but we know we know from basic science and clinical experience that Tripan Blue, it does reduce the elasticity of the capsule. In fact, in pediatrics, we use it all the time for that purpose. Aniridae capsules are very thin; they're very friable, and we don't. I don't want to add something more that's going to make it more friable and make it more potential risk for tearing out. So ICG is fine, though, and as Shin showed, ICG would be okay to use in that case. It's it's a it's a Nickerman vertical chopper which I which we use as a horizontal technique as well which can be used, and pupil dispensing devices. I don't think it's, it's no problem to use them if you feel comfortable. I use them in a 
hooks in a small eye, use malignant in, in, a, in, a, in an average anterior chamber depth if you need to. But I think as you get more comfortable, you realize that you don't need to have these crutches, so to speak. You don't need to stain. You don't need to use capsule devices. You don't need to use, to use papal devices if you, if you don't need to. And again, I think it depends on you as a surgeon. But if your technique is, is great, I think you can perhaps master without it as an option. Uh, no, thank you very much. Ivo, thank you very much. No, uh, you, you, you gather a ninja, samurai, and a Yoda. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Everybody has the, the power here. <laughs> Dr. Yamane, please, yes. for the words. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me. And I'm, I'm very excited to join this Vivinder. So I learned much things this one, one hour. And I think we have uh, many choice nowadays. So, and I, I think that the answer is not only one, but uh, we have many choices. So we, we should find which way is best for ourselves. And everybody, as, as everybody said, uh, I, I think the mind, mindset is mindset is most important things. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Yeo? Ivo, thanks again for organizing this. I think we all learned so much. I think the concept of really aiming for mastery in our subject is so innovative. And I think I'll just reiterate what I said earlier, apart from you know, having focus and, 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 and concentration and, and, and knowledge, it's also wanting to really avoid surprises and aim as high as you can be. And one way you can really aim for, and how do you achieve this mastery is to attend high quality webinars like what Ike is going to do on Saturday and really find a mentor like Ike, like Takashi, like you, Ivo, uh, Shin, you know, follow the mentors and see what they're doing, see what they're thinking. And I, I think you're well on the way if you do that. Thank you very much, Doc. Ike? Wow, I mean, it's an honor to be with this group and we have an international crew here and, and I just enjoyed the camaraderie and the pearls that were dished out and I, I learned from all of you I think the best master, as you said, is the one who learns from, from, him, from him or herself and from others as well. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned about mentorship. I mean, without mentors, I think we would not be able to advance our skills. And I think I want people to be mindful of not just thinking about the surgical technique. I mean, that comes later. It's the mindset, the thinking, uh, as we talked about earlier, and the cognitive part about decision making, which is so important. You know, use the time now during the COVID crisis to put yourself in different scenarios and problem solve. Walk yourself through different cases as you watch videos. Replay this and say, what would I have done? What would I have done differently? And, and play through the different role-playing scenarios. That's amazing. I mean, you know, I've been practicing writing my left hand. See, that's my left hand. I've been spending the last few weeks working my left hand writing. I'm right-handed because I want, to, I want to just be better at my left hand, right? I mean, use the time to do different things and become a master of different skill sets, whether it's writing, brushing your teeth, or whatever else you may do in your own time at night. But use both hands. Thank you so much. You're so right, you know, but, but one of the, the, the most important principles that keeps coming from every single speaker is to think differently, right? We, we go back to Steve Jobs and stay foolish, stay hungry, think different, approach things different, but always with a goal, always with a plan, always with doing some benchmarking, putting milestones, you know, you need to go where you're going, you need to know where you're going, but also thinking it from a different perspective. I, I, I'm really emotional right now. I, I, I wanna thank this amazing panel. I'm here just trying to moderate these geniuses. So thank you for your time. Thank the people for, from, for their time. And I, I will try to answer all the questions. You know, I, I know it's late for many. It's, it's early actually for Yamane and Yo, but, um, but, but we will try to answer all these questions and we wait for everybody on Saturday. Let's do something epic. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your time. We'll see everyone on Sunday. Thank you. Peace, love. Bye. Bye.